proving moral inconsistencies in the life of a moralist is sufficient to cause to reject his arguments as a whole. Because you know, I mean, you're going to get a shitstorm of nitpickers and naysayers and nasty little trolls. Minus repetition, empty promises, and fresh into wine. Pseudo intellectual pronouncements, so that it's for the blind. Narrow is a path to reductionist morality. Follow the leader to freedom, but nothing is free. When the bill comes to his time to pay the piper in Cause of virtue and slithering like a fight Read the philosophical psychology professor We can't wait another two thousand years They should thank him for taking all their money And with his initiative to get them up and run Now they've got a brand new perception of reality And they owe with blood, sweat, and tears Pile on the accusations, friends, this is only a test in defense of an idol, the faithful never rest Those who criticize the leader are nasty little trolls It's a virtue, this cult of personality extols Isolated from family and friends and any eternal weapons And each one of them depends on his rationalizations To cover up the flaws in this universal decree that's what they pay for, and that's their old defense Regardless of all the contradictions, motivations against all the definitions The pseudo-conclusions said you are already so free That's our word. Here with Seamus and Jim Jesus, of course. Brought to you by Bipcot and Fiend Phone. Music by 3chainlinks.com. Still waiting for our composer to make our music. Um, actually, the music that you heard in front of us was actually by Adam Rainmaker uh, with that uh, Stefan Molyneux punk rock song. You didn't hear it yet. <laughs> so we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> so how you doing, Seamus? Well, pretty good. Uh, I'm kind of shocked. I thought it was pronounced him, Jesus. <laughs> no. Blowing my mind here. You may have missed the episode when me and Nick were talking about the origins of my name, but uh, yeah. So, anyways, so what's been going well, on with you? I'm really not interested in hearing it. Okay, so what's been going on with you? Because it's been forever since you've been on. It has been a while. Um, I've been busy getting some book knowledge and whatnot at school, and basically, we're at the school where I'm going. It's this relatively intense ten week program. Uh, it, it's broken up into quarters instead of semesters. So you just work around the clock for 10 weeks, then you have a relatively long break. So I was so busy during the time I was in class that I couldn't really do any podcasts. But now I'm open for a little while. So Yeah, which is which is good because one of our other co-hosts, Matt, is like in, he said that he's retardedly busy, uh, which is actually kind of not a right thing to say because um, – there's a thing that's been happening today <laughs> where I guess someone shot up a um, a facility in oh, a, yeah. in, in a, a town nearby where I used to was like born and raised um, in San Bernardino. I was born in Riverside, or well, I I was raised in Riverside. I was born in India, which is like you know whatever. Um, what? Yeah, it, it, whatever. It's not relevant. Uh, but yeah, I guess there was a shooting. Uh, I don't know exactly how many people are killed at this moment. There, I guess estimates right now was like. 14 people are dead and it was like a 
disability center where people with disabilities, I'm not sure if it was mental retardation or physical uh, disability. I don't know. But it's it's pretty bad, and uh, of course every every side is coming awful. out. That's awful. Yeah, and all the you know all the terrible people are coming out saying, "See, we should we should legalize guns," and oh, see, we should ban all the guns. It's like, don't tragedy pimp, please. That's so terrible. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, of course it's to be expected at this point, though, yeah. man. Oh, that that kills me. I mean, that's so sad. I mean, hopefully we have more information on the shooting soon. But either way, it's extremely tragic that somebody would do that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, but uh, yeah. So, so you know, I guess our thoughts and your prayers uh, <laughs> go out to them. Yeah, my prayers. Yeah. So uh, prayers, so, anyways, on, on to more good stuff. So, uh, have you been following what's been going on in Mizzou? Because uh, I know you like to bust on the uh, SJW types. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Uh, I know that there's a, a group of. I understand there's a group of very brave protesters fighting oppression. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Is that a correct interpretation of what's <laughs> occurring there? Okay, I've been keeping up with the events. I understand that essentially a group of students is lashing out as a result of all the injustice that's taking place, and they're getting people fired who absolutely are responsible and absolutely should lose their jobs. And I also understand that they're being really open about letting people from the media into their protests so that the public can get a very fair and balanced picture of what's going on. They're not, like, shutting reporters out or anything, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh. Well, no wonder I'm so grossly misinformed on this issue. Uh, yeah, no. The whole situation with Mizzou, my understanding is that there was a poop swastika made. Is that correct? And, and that sparked a huge protest. Um, it was it was a Some, yeah it was a poop swastika and it was also I guess a bunch of rednecks in a truck uh, went up to a black kid and started you know calling him names uh, racial slurs and uh, I don't know if they were oh. throwing stuff or beat him up I don't I don't remember what, exactly what happened but people are skeptical whether or not this really happened but you know of course we can't mm-hmm. we can't question anyone who uh, makes these claims right so um, yeah. well if then, that did happen if it's just for the record, if that did happen, that's I mean, it's pretty messed up that someone would be shouting racial slurs at anybody. Yeah. And it's especially annoying when you have a large group of people talking crap to you, which it sounds like it would be that kind of a situation. If someone's screaming the N-word at a black person, I would imagine they were outnumbered. So my heart goes out to him uh, if that occurred. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt in this circumstance. But is that really an institutional problem, or is that just a bunch of assholes in a pickup well, truck who were feeling rowdy? Clearly, this was the principal's fault. I mean, surely he had to have been on the truck somehow. Like, there's no way around a yeah. <laughs> principal dean. I'm sorry. <laughs> the head dean. The dean. That's right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's yeah, clearly his up. fault. And, uh, and clearly he was the one responsible for the poop swastikas. Uh, yeah, I mean, he was drawing poop swastikas. The, here's the thing about that, and this is not an original thought. I heard this somewhere, but if someone draws a swastika in poop, there's a good chance that they're not a fan of the swastika. Because if you revere a certain symbol, you're not going to depict it using feces. <laughs> yeah, it's like... So gonna... the idea that this was an actual Nazi is kind of stupid. Yeah, it was. It was probably just trying to someone. Someone just trying to be uh, offensive <laughs> in the most offensive way possible yeah. by being a jerk, being a Richard. But you know, like, yeah. would would you draw uh, the the voluntarist symbol uh, in feces or you know? P- yeah, like, exactly. I'm spreading the word. I'm spreading the word by drawing my most deeply held symbols using human shit. Like, are you kidding me? Then this is the narrative we're supposed to buy into. Like, if someone drew a swastika using poo, they were probably extremely intoxicated. There's no no sober person draws swastikas using poo. I'm sorry, this is just not something someone in their right mind does. So to claim that this is something society condones, absolutely not. No. <laughs> no I don't think I don't know anybody who's like I, I don't even know like white supremacists who would say something like that. Like, oh yeah, we got to draw it in poop. Mm. Got to be a easy boop. Show them, show them inferior races who's boss. That's how you demonstrate racial superiority is by drawing Clearly. things with your own feces. That'll show them how advanced and evolved I am. Yeah, so I guess they had like this big protest type thing going on, and uh, I guess they were creating a safe space. Uh, you know, where no one can challenge them because, you know, that's what saves because we, we're not supposed to challenge them. We're, no, we're not supposed to question them or film the, them or anything because that's that's, you know, because reasons. 
Dude, didn't they go into a library while kids were studying and start shouting at them or something? W- was it? I, I saw like a video of them shouting at. I don't remember. It was some. It was some similar social justice related protest mm-hmm. somewhere in the country. They went to the library and started shouting at kids. And you're like, I have no idea why people think liberals are annoying. Like, but uh, I think that the interesting thing is, I did see a video. Not too long ago when all the stuff at Mizzou was breaking out, so I assumed it was there, but maybe it was somewhere else. But I believe it was a Black Lives Matter protest that broke into a a library and started shouting at people. And the ringleader said something along the lines of, if I'm making you feel uncomfortable, good, I'm doing my job. And I was like, are you suggesting that sometimes making people uncomfortable to question their beliefs is a good thing? Wow, who would have thought that saying something politically incorrect could have an advantage? It was just so ironic to hear a social justice warrior say that his job was done properly by making people feel uncomfortable when they're constantly claiming that questioning anyone on anything is a microaggression. Yeah, and what's particularly bad about this is that this was a study hall. People were trying to study. People were in the library. Yeah, and you know, you know the library editor. Get whisper, whisper shh, you know, whisper. You don't, you don't be loud. And then they come in there and they're like, you know, almost banging drums and you know, blowing horns. They might as well uh, screaming at the top of their lungs. Black Lives Matter. It's like, dude, I have an exam tomorrow, <laughs> and you're ruining everything. I'm trying. That's great. You? I agree with you. I agree with you that Black Lives Matter. I have a test tomorrow, good sir. I'm trying to get my my minor in African American <laughs> studies right here. I feel for you, but you're really getting in the way of my ability to pass this class, yeah. dude. I might respect the protest if they came in and whispered into the megaphone because it was a library. <laughs> like guys, Black Lives Matter. You know, give like thumbs up, like right? yeah. There you go. No, get out. I got to study. <laughs> guys, there's. There's a serious institutional problem here on campus, and we all need to get really upset about it. And the libraries, the librarians, like, dude, that librarian must have had a fit. I, I just imagine the whole time that they're in there, she's just glaring at them like, shh, guys, guys, quiet down. <laughs> yeah, There's then- no respect for the Dewey Decimal System anymore <laughs> in this country. Dude, the, that li- how could they do that? That librarian doesn't come to the Black Lives Matter protest and start whispering shit at people. Who the hell are they? <laughs> yeah, and then like, uh, like this, the person that was filming it, like one of the the organizer or one of the people that was in the group that was doing this, went up to him and was like, "Why aren't you standing up? Like, what are you racist or something?" It's like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, That's you know, just, if you don't agree with I've- with their ideology, it's it's because you're racist. Yeah. And it's not only that. You can completely agree with their ideology, but disagree in the way that they're trying to achieve said progress. And then you're racist. Like, you could completely agree, yeah, police brutality is a problem. Yeah, black lives do matter. But I'm not screaming about it while I'm in the library, so clearly I'm a bigot. Yeah, clearly you are a bigot, sir. I'll have you know that Mm. you are a huge bigot. (laughs) <laughs> but no, no, I mean, I know I am, but I was speaking hypothetically, oh, okay. you know, if I were some, if I, if I was a more educated college student yeah. who knew about the ways of the world and didn't hate people yeah. based on arbitrary reasons. I will totally back you up that you are not a racist. Misogynist, yeah, but definitely not a racist. Definitely misogynist, yeah. Yeah, def- yeah definitely. No, definitely, absolutely. I've never had a problem with different races voting. It's just women voting. That yeah. really irks me. No. Yeah. You see, I actually have to watch my back on that because people think I'm being serious sometimes when I, when I crack them kind of jokes. But uh, women are great. I was raised by I was I was raised by an equity feminist. My mom was a feminist, not not a social justice warrior esque feminist by any means. But she was always telling me how how equal women are and whatnot. Yeah. If if your definition of feminism is that all all the genders should be equal and have rights, then I'm for that. But it doesn't seem yeah. like that. But that's what they're trying to do. What they're trying to do is yeah, exactly. push like these weird ideologies on people, like these and these like these consent rules. And there was this uh, this big kerfluffle between uh, I don't know if you rem- know her uh, shoe on head on YouTube. And, yes, and yeah, it, she's and great. And there was like this stupid. <laughs> he really is like a, a short bus t- type of guy, <laughs> kind of guy. Uh, That's named Kevin, K- Kevin Logan. I don't care. <laughs> well, I guess they had a big <laughs> thing, and they were talking about uh, consent laws, and he ended up even agreeing that it was a little bit. You know, even he did agree that it was a little bit weird. You know, the the constant consent uh, thing where you're like, "Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I do this? Can I touch here? Can I put it there?" It's, it, hey, yeah, Jim, it's Jim, terrible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop you for a second. Do you still consent to doing this podcast with me right now? I just want to check to see. <laughs> yeah. if you, are you, you are you fully willing to to do this podcast and under no duress whatsoever? <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 I, I so agree. yeah, that's the thing. I mean, if your definition of feminism is that like, you know, everyone's equal and, and women are equal and also should not vote though, then like, yeah, I'm absolutely a feminist. Yeah, and the the problem is you're, you're when you when you adopt a label like that, everyone on the other side of that label is going to go, oh, well, you support this and you believe that and that's wrong and you're dumb and uh, uh-huh. I, I can't stand when people do that. Like War Corpse is like the worst yeah. on that. Yeah. <laughs> but well, here's the thing too. I guess I really should be more careful about joking with that kind of material because I have been speaking a lot about feminism lately and I think it's important that people can take me seriously when I do say I, I legitimately care about human rights. I mean, I make jokes every now and then, but yeah, if, if you legitimately think women are inferior or shouldn't be allowed to make their own choices or shouldn't vote or something like that, you're a complete asshole. And there actually are people who I've heard argue, it's very rare, but there are people who occasionally will still make the argument that women shouldn't vote. Um, well, I, it doesn't happen I do, very I often. Do. I don't think it's a serious thing. No one should vote, though. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's your thing, right? no <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vote. yeah, Like, women shouldn't vote. Exactly. Men neither. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, I think if you really have a problem with, with equality of the genders, you're you're an asshole. But I don't think many people do. I think people just disagree on how we're going to go about achieving that goal. But the second you disagree with somebody's method of doing so, you don't agree with the goal now? I mean, that seems to be the way people have always argued when they don't have any legitimate points to make. But, yeah, I, I'm definitely greatly annoyed by this idea that the moment you disagree with someone's particular brand of feminism, you're a misogynist. Oh, but feminism can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Mm. Well, hold on a second. You know, when you point out something one feminist did that's terrible, you know, you you know, feminism can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, and we use the term different. But then the second I want to label myself a feminist, but oh, if you don't believe in intersectionalism and that everyone needs to be referred to by gender neutral pronouns, you're not a real feminist. <laughs> yeah, those those so. are the, the really crazy Tumblr esque feminists, uh, Tumblristas, I think. Yeah. Uh, so Which unfortunately are becoming, yeah. Yeah. It, Tumblr, it, well, that's the thing. I think Tumblr feminism just made more mainstream what academic feminism had held all along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and a lot of that stuff is actually anti men. Uh, and, and I'm not one of those people, uh -huh. like, oh, all forms of feminism, you know. Oh, no, I'm not like that. Uh, but this particular type, I mean, like the, the Valerie Serlanis, uh, there was that other girl that was like in academia who was also talking about uh, killing men. Then you have like the uber feminist. People say that she's a troll, but I've actually had, I had talked to her before she became like, you know, on new, like uh, internet articles and was famous because I had stumbled across one of her videos. And I was, you know, and I was like, this is crazy. And she ended up like contacting me and like we had an exchange and I, I'm pretty much of the conclusion that it's most likely not a troll, but she, uh, who but, was this? But her name is the Uber feminist and she has a YouTube channel and she, she looks like, like a Barbie doll. Like she, she's gorgeous and she, uh, she has like the Southern draw and it's really sexy, but it all kind of gets taken away when she says that, you know, men should, uh, like 90% of the male population needs to be eliminated and the ones that are left needs to be keeping oh, like Oh, femtheist? Yeah, the femtheist. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> wow. Well, first of all, Jim, maybe the reason she's trying to turn you off is because she's sick and tired of you objectifying her, <laughs> saying she's beautiful. Is Respect. So yeah, she's she's pretty nuts. I th I why so I was pretty certain that she was trying that she is sincere. No, you just got out. What was that? <laughs> oh, I I was pretty sure she was trolling. What makes you think she's sincere? Um, I had talked to her before she became like super big, and uh, she she was like she showed me like a pic, like she was saying that like you know some dude punched her and men are terrible because of that, and I was like. What? I'm not buying it. Like you're trolling, and she was like, and she showed me a picture of her like welted eye, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Um, wow. Yeah, I guess I that guess, settles it. The the discussion's over. Put them in camps. Yeah, I think it was more along the lines of her baby daddy is a piece of crap, and he punched uh, punched her, and she's instead of you know being mad at that person who did that thing, she is, you know, mad at all men, and yeah. It's funny how that works. Yeah. Whatever. Screw her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> screw her. But here's the problem. The fact that what she is saying is held within what you might call... I mean, it's within the realm of internet feminism. I mean, I don't, I don't hear that many feminists coming out and criticizing her publicly. 
uh, there there were a few, um, but she but no one really like cares about her anymore. Like they just kind of blow her off as just kind of like a weirdo. Uh, but I remember there was a couple yeah. people. Um, the, the guy who used to run the channel Federalist Films, Ruth Rendell, uh, Unseen Perfidy. He had a bunch of different ones, and he he ended up was like calling her out, or I think he made a video calling her out. Uh, the skeptical heretic did. True Puka had said that. I think it was True Puka that said that she. Um, that she was like like a Barbie doll <laughs> with the uh, with the embodiment of Hitler. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, she doesn't want to put people in camps and eliminate the population. So, I don't think it's an unfair comparison to draw. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's 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 a pretty. And then, like, of course, some men will be in zoos so that you know, like, when women take their their daughters to go to the zoo they can understand like oh see how brutal these men are look at them fighting over scraps <laughs> <laughs> like are you kidding me this has to be a troll but they used to roam is. the earth that's pretty <laughs> funny i mean honestly let's talk about these zoos though i mean are they nice is this like current zoos or, or would it be like a habitat that i might enjoy like if you got flat screens everywhere and couches and beer and it's kind of like a massive man cave i don't i mean no, because then you would just be with a bunch of other men, and that th this sounds terrible. Never mind. I was trying to look at the bright side, but it looks like a like a bad future because this is very clearly inevitable with the way things are going. Yeah. I th honestly, I think if you disagree with her, you're probably just a misogynist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think they're gonna it's have like, some get, like cloths and like <laughs> like oh, you want food? There's you know there's an animal and here's a club. Go to it and look 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 at them. They're terrible. Look, they're beating that poor animal to death. <laughs> Society would be just fine. Yeah, they, they uh, completely eliminating one gender from all serious societal roles that would, would not have any negative effects. Yeah. I don't think so. I can't see anything bad coming of that. Yeah, and have you been watching the the, the latest season of South Park? Oh, it's phenomenal. Oh, it's, isn't it? <laughs> it's probably the best thing ever. It's so good. I can't wait for the new episode tonight. I can't wait to, for the new episode tonight. And all these social justice warriors are like, has South Park gone too far? It's like, yes, that's what they do is go yeah. too far. That's the whole point of the show. If you've not been watching, they say what no one else is willing to say. And do I agree with them all the time? Absolutely not. But do I appreciate that they can push the envelope and should have the freedom to do so? Hell yeah. yeah and frankly, this season it has been very good. Yeah. And they're really kind of going after this uber PC culture that we're seeing from like the Tumbleristas and and all that stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, the, that PC the PC principle is freaking brilliant. They they they, they kind of point out that like they're basically the invert dude bros, <laughs> and like yeah, and that that's making them it, it, so it's, mad. It's it's a mating strategy. I mean, not always, but look, some people are of the view that every single thing every single person does is at the very least subconsciously just them trying to find a sexual partner and reproduce and pass their genes on and you could see how that fits in with the evolutionary um view of of humanity but i think it is an interesting discussion though is it is it conscious that a lot of these social justice do like do, is this just a mating strategy for betas i don't like using the phrase yeah. beta or like cuck or anything but because it's kind of annoying but in all seriousness it, i can see why people get the impression that a lot of these guys are just trying to get laid um it's not to say there's no such thing as a sincere male feminist but i think very oftentimes these are just I, I don't know man maybe I'm, I'm talking out my ass here because i do know some guys who are who are relatively liberal and male feminists who who aren't like that who aren't trying to get laid but when i see people white knighting on the internet my first instinct is oh come on this guy's after some yeah and uh, actually i actually have a friend who's actually a youtube feminist uh i think i think he's has a lot more nuance than, than uh, a lot of people would give him credit for uh but friends yeah. don't let friends be youtube feminists yeah. jim <laughs> but uh i'm sure you've heard of dick coughlin uh I'm sure you've heard of him. He was like one of the bigger YouTubers back in the day. He's, he's had multiple Coughlin? channels. Yeah, Coughlin. Six, he's got a terrible last name. Yeah, Coughlin six six six. I've I've heard of him. Yeah. Okay. Wow, he's just done great things with my last name. Does he pronounce it Coughlin? What a traitor! It's Coughlin. <laughs> Tell him to give him a good slap for me. No, nah, he's cool though. But um, it, but some people have given me crap for being friends with him, and I'm like, look, you know. I'm, I don't care what people's ideology are. If they're good people, they're good people. And he's, he is good people. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Um, I get you there, dude. There's so many ANCAPs that will just dump all over you for being friends with non-ANCAPs. They're like, you know, they've kind of got a gun to your head. You should talk about that. They'll pull the Mountie thing. Or or even other times, like, especially because there's so much infighting within the libertarian community. Like, I remember I posted a stuff on Molyneux quote that I liked. And this is already well after I'd established the fact that I maybe wasn't Molyneux's biggest fan. (laughs) And there was like 40 comments of people like, oh, yeah. You, uh, Mon, you did this and he said that. And how could you post the quote? I was like, I like the quote, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I've I've seen people post Hitler quotes, but you're usually trying to show like, how bad he is, or you know, maybe some of the what is about the good things Hitler said, but uh, <laughs> but like no one ever remembers that man. Yeah. It's it's crazy. You kill eleven million people, and like people think you're a bad dude. Yeah. Like uh, his, his stance on gun control or his dual stance on religion, uh, you know, they'll they'll post one of those, try to show, oh, he's a Christian. No, no, he's an atheist. Like, no, he he was a propagandist. We don't really know what <laughs> what he really believed. I think yeah. th- this might be a little conspiratorial, but I'm pretty sure he was an like an occultist. I, I'm pretty sure he was like a German pagan. I, I think I think one of his people in command were real was really into the occult, and he just kind of like went along with it because you know it was. It it's was like yes, propaganda. whatever. Yeah, I'll do this occult nonsense. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, they were really into like this weird Aryan thing where they wanted to create the Ubermensch by purifying the Aryan genes because they thought they were corrupt or the the genes were corrupt. And if they could mm-hmm. get pure Aryan genes, then they could create basically Superman uh, and, and make yeah. a super army and just uh, and you know take over the Earth. But obviously, that's crap. <laughs> but, well, and you know what's nuts about that too, though that. There were always these rumors and legends that the Nazi government was actually searching for, like, ancient religious artifacts. And that's where the story of the Temple the Temple of... Or, I'm sorry, that's where the story of Raiders of the Lost Ark actually came from. Like, apparently there were stories and rumors long before the Indiana Jones series that the Nazis were searching in the Holy Land for ancient religious artifacts because they thought they held certain powers. It could be bullshit, but when you think about how involved in the occult some members of the Nazi party were and how... The, just their own state religion and their own superstitions about how there was going to be a thousand year Reich and all these other crazy things. It doesn't seem that far off. Yeah. But, you know, the whole going back into, you know, and then coming back to Nazis, um, kind of like speaking of yeah, the social justice the, warriors, the, the social justice, you know, the, the left. I mean, that's why they call, you know, the alt right and uh, fascism and all that stuff reactionaries, because it's a reaction to the terrible things that the left does. And when you when you folk and i had this vi- i have this video on my channel i don't i didn't have it it is um uh, uh, of jeffrey tucker talking about this and it's a really interesting talk and he's talking about how people like see all the bad things that the left does and then and they're in power right now so that's kind of what you focus on and then you kind of ignore like all the bad things that the right does and then you get sucked into like these weird kind of alternative right uh ideologies and it seems like um it, Molyneux's kind of taking that route. Uh, There's a few other uh, ANCAP YouTubers that were taking that route as well. Uh, and, and they have actually... Cantwell. Yeah. Well, even before Cantwell, there was um, Fringe Elements, uh, Individual Autonomy, Spock Talk. Um, just there was a, a pretty much most of, of the good YouTubers, ANCAP YouTubers at the time. And and Molyneux's kind of making this thing. And Cantwell is, is, on, is on the bandwagon now. He just posted this thing the other day we talked about it on the fiends actually do you still have that thing up or should i should i dig it out real quick <laughs> the chris cantwell quote about yeah. how he's a right-wing extremist yeah do you still yeah have i don't have that opened up no but, but he did make a video about, about it though yeah whoa did he, oh what did he say uh that basically he it was based uh, a longer version of that saying that he he is adopting the term um he, he's he's a he's not using the term voluntarist anymore he is he's he is using the term um uh, reactionary, but he still considers himself an ANCAP, uh, and uh, yeah, he, he and it, you know, if anyone calls him a rate, what was it? Anyone calls him a racist or uh, misogynist? I or just whatever, believe in white pride. I'm gonna call them an N word and a faggot and a cuck. You know, <laughs> it's like oh my goodness, that's dude. the way to do it. Yeah. I mean, all right. So here's the thing. I think Cantwell is one of those libertarians who it's more popular amongst moderate libertarians to bash i don't agree with most of what he said or how he said it particularly but i've never hated the dude 
Uh, I'm just really intrigued by this development because usually ANCAPs only use right wing as a pejorative. And the only time ANCAPs are referred to as right wingers, the only time ANCAPs are considered to be right wingers is, is by critics of libertarianism, basically. Yeah, mostly from the very far left. Uh, I, uh, yeah. A lot of people kind of understand that it's, it's more of a centrist position because we don't care if you're if you want to smoke weed or you know marry your boyfriend or whatever, do whatever you want so long as you're not hurting anybody else. And that that really kind of comes from you know the left's views on uh, um, uh, social issues, but. You know, we also, we also kind of adopt the rights, uh, economic. Well, not the far right, uh, but but definitely some yeah. some right economic uh, plans. We're definitely not fascists uh, economically. Yeah. Well, I think that maybe the, the way I usually put it is, you can even still concern yourself with other people's personal choices in an either conservative or liberal way, but still be a libertarian so long as you don't advocate for government force to be used against that person to quote-unquote correct their behavior. Yeah, so you can still be a liberal person who says to your friend, hey man, like, why are you owning guns, dude? Like, don't do that and still have a, a problem with guns, but also not want to use the government to take them away. And you'd still have the libertarian position on that. You would just be liberal in your personal views on the issue. Yeah, and a lot of people don't know this, but... Even back in the day, I always kind of thought that was weird that Molyneux would say something like this, but he actually is not a big fan of guns at all. Like he, he's all for no. you know guns, people having guns, but he thinks that in an ideal world, in his ideal world, that no one would have guns, not even the criminals, and just yeah. kind of you know raise people through peaceful parenting until we don't need guns anymore. I think that's a little mm -hmm. uh, utopian. But um, oh, I pulled up the uh, Christopher Cantwell quote, and this is really interesting because he says, "Yes, I'm a Trump supporting right wing extremist with pro right opinion." Oh, I should do Cantwell's voice on race and traditional views on gender. On top of that, I'm also <laughs> totally ashamed of my. Uh, I'm to I'm not totally ashamed of my country. If this makes you want to throw a fit and make dumbass comments on my post, then please get the fuck out now because I am sick of, uh, sick of taking the time to block whining little assholes on Facebook who don't know when to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so he he supports Trump, uh, and Trump wants to do like these, this radical immigration policy. Uh, he's also for you know socialist health care. At least this uh, you know a couple weeks ago, we don't know what it is this week. You know the guy is a loose cannon. Um, yeah. So I mean, and, he, and he's, he's supporting this guy, and this guy is the Trump is terrible. I don't I don't understand what the appeal is except for the fact that he you know he can be entertaining, but that kind of entertainment exactly. goes away when you find out you know someone beat the crap out of a bunch of Mexican people because Trump and that was their reason. <laughs> you know it's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is pretty messed up actually. I mean, a lot of the reason why people support him is like you said the entertainment value. And I actually had a discussion with this about this in the comments on my YouTube video about Trump. And somebody just commented something, like, oh, you know, blah, 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 I support Trump. And it started out like he was defensive, and he called me. He's like, you know, to be honest, I think you're a bit intellectually pretentious. I was like, just a bit? Like, are you sure you're being honest? And, uh, I re but I, I left this reply where I was like, look, man, um... Most of why people like Trump is because he entertains them, and there's nothing wrong with being entertained by the guy. Like, he'll make me chuckle in spite of myself every now and then, too, but he would not make a good president. And the guy ended up responding, like, look, I, you know, I'm sorry for calling you pretentious, and I was a little rude at first. So we got along in the end, but it does seem to me like the mindset behind his supporters really does seem to be he says things that everyone else is afraid to say, regardless of whether or not they're true. And he handles the media pretty well. Mm-hmm. But the media is kind of like being dumb about it because they think that they can take him down by pointing out that he's doing stupid things. But that's kind of the point of his campaign is to do stupid mm -hmm. things and then get a reaction and then people like him even more. So every time the media kind of jumps on that, they get a little bit more clingy about the dude. And his, uh -huh. you know, his rating goes up. So when he's talking about, like yeah. right now, he's talking about those uh, supposed <laughs> invisible Muslims that were, <laughs> that, were uh, that were praising when 9/11 happened in New Jersey. That never, oh, that yeah. never happened. Uh, and now the media is like, this never happened. Like, where, you know, where are you getting this from? Everybody's kind of doubling, and he doubles down on it, and everyone else doubles down on it too. And now everyone loves the guy even Mus more. You're doing it wrong. Well, it's. 
I mean, progressives just kind of assume that everyone else has their values except for a very small fringe group of hardcore conservative conspiracy theorists, bigots. And unless you're in that category, you're just going to agree with them on everything. And so they point out that Trump says insensitive things like that's going to make Republicans not want to vote for him. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're it's gonna... like they... they it's, they're, they're so dumb. If they really wanted to destroy the man, they would point out the fact that he has donated to Hillary Clinton and he supports socialist medicine and all these other things that would actually possibly threaten his standing in the GOP if conservative people knew. And I, and I like Hillary. She's she's a wonderful person. Don't get me wrong. I just disagree with her policy. She was at my, my, my family's wedding. It was a wonderful. And she showed up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, but you know, it's, it's kind of sad this this kind of it, it, and you can't really blame you can't really blame like people being stupid causing other people to be stupid. And, you know, like of course you can blame the right for or the left for being stupid, but you can't really blame the left for making the right even more dumb <laughs> by by joining these yeah. kind of like alt alt right ideologies and stuff. But, yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah, yeah no, that's true. But we're we're um, we're we're Back months away. Yeah. yeah, we're months away from not having to even realize that Cantwell exists anymore because he's going to be completely out of the liberty movement. It seems like that he's definitely on that path. So, what do you think he's going to do? Do you think he's just going to switch over to? Do you think he's just going to try to adopt more of a conservative audience, or what? No, he's no. This is not this is not conservative. And and uh, we were talking before we started recording. Sorry to shake my mic around, but. Uh, you were saying that he was that he was turning into a neocon. No, he already was a neocon, and then he became a libertarian. He's not becoming back, turning back into a neocon. A neoconservative is someone like George Bush, who's like a compassionate conservative. Yeah. He's definitely not that. Uh, he's turning into a, a neo reactionary. That's the right term, and that's you know that's kind of the fair. all right and the you know what is it the dark enlightenment type stuff. He's getting into that the race realism. <laughs> the RK selection thing in sociology, which is just garbage. Um, you know, a bunch of other it's stuff. It's always, I mean, yeah, I guess I, I think in the Liberty movement, very oftentimes neocon is just used as a pejorative for somebody who yeah. holds Republican positions. But that would be a compliment in this case. If he was actually yeah, turning well, into a neocon, we could be like, okay, we'll just not, we'll not pay attention to him anymore, whatever. Yeah. But you know, he's turning into the alt-right. He's hanging out with the right stuff. Biz and all those people too. Um, you know, and, and now he's trying to he's trying to be like uncuck the right and um, rogue you by making these uh, edge lord uh, song parodies. But while I think those are funny, Cantwell <laughs> Cantwell's uh, song that he did was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. What was the song? I didn't even hear it. Okay, you know the song. Uh, it, uh, I need a hero. Um, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't recognize it by the name, but if I heard it, I it's might It's like know. an 80s song. Like, I need a hero. It's like one of those songs they used to use in, like, film. But Cantwell sounds like, you know, like one of those people you're like, oh, it's him yeah, going up to the karaoke machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was very good. Can we, can we get the girl that actually knows how to sing uh, on next? Or at least half <laughs> Yeah, it was so bad. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'll have to listen to it. I don't know Good why luck. you're such a hater, dude. Yeah, but uh, he, he was talking yeah. about how he needs a Pinochet. <laughs> it's like, all right, you're just trying to be an edge lord now. Go home, go home, Cantwell. You're yeah. drunk. Yeah. Again. He, I guess, I guess I am interested in seeing how that's going to develop. I probably like about a year ago. I remember hearing people talk about how Cantwell and Molly were both just headed more towards the men's rights arena of things mm -hmm. than they are libertarianism and we're becoming more right wing and i can see that i i am very i'm genuinely curious about molyneux he seems as if his behavior is far more strategic than cantwell's is and maybe a little more well thought out uh again i'm not going to get into the whole cult theory but if you do subscribe to that then molyneux is somebody who does things um with good thought you know yeah. even if he even if you're cynical of his motives he, he he thinks about what he does more so you get the feeling that cantwell is just out there trying to be edgy yeah i don't think that molyneux no, like, he thinks he, that he's evil and he's trying to do evil things i don't i don't think anybody does that you know except for like yeah i don't crazy think anyone is, sociopath yeah. like criminal you know 
criminally insane except people. Trump uh, tr- yeah clearly but <laughs> except Trump <laughs> he sees himself no, I, as a super villain I get you yeah <laughs> but but I mean, you could see I mean even the most charitable thing would be like okay so he's, he's trying to he's trying to play to a new audience it seems like he may have lost a little bit of support with uh, the DMCA and some other things and you know he's trying to kind of con- you know, kind of focus his efforts because originally he was he was focusing his efforts on converting the left. I think that's actually where he came from originally was from the left. Uh, I came from the left too, but um, he used like to, you, yeah, you dirty green partier. <laughs> yeah, he, he used to like kind of promote like this um, kind of like new Soviet man, but like an ANCAP version of it, where if you raise children, um, you know, you can basically reprogram them into like perfect uh, nap abiding citizens. And, uh, you know, it's not true. <laughs> it's, I mean, like, the Soviets couldn't do it. The, new, so- yeah. Yeah. But, the um, new socialist man, basically. Yeah, yeah, the new Soviet man, um, whatever. I like the Soviet name better. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so he was kind of doing that. He was, he was always kind of, like, saying, like, kind of coming it from it from, like, a left angle. Like, you know, here, you know, he's really focusing on things like the poor and, you know, the people who are disadvantaged and stuff like that, really kind of focusing on that aspect. More than, you know, kind of like the other stuff. And then it seemed like he was kind of either losing support or he thought that he maybe he could have gotten all the support he could from that. And he was kind of focusing a lot on Bitcoin for a while. And that kind of mm-hmm. looked like it kind of drained out a little bit. So now he's trying to probably conser- uh, kind of focus his efforts to converting the right. Uh, either that or yeah. he actually probably sees that he was wrong. And he's <laughs> like, that's one of the other theories that he he thinks he's wrong, but he's too he's too afraid to come out and admit that, you know, that he's, that he's not a libertarian anymore out, out of fear of losing even more support. And then, you know, kind of, you know, kind of playing this kind of like, you know, two horse yeah. game and then maybe eventually changing his mind after he gets a lot of people coming on board. But I don't know. That, that's yeah, a conspiracy that's sort of theory. Th- but. Th- I don't know. I mean, that's what kind of what I meant when I said that he's more well thought out. Like, if he were okay. somebody, if he had changed his mind and become a right winger, he wouldn't just come out and say it. He would wait a little while until he got a following that was willing to support him spewing right wing opinions more often. Mm-hmm. So, or maybe it's just a real it, natural it, evolution that he's going through. So who knows? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Who knows? I'm not. I, I'm not like a huge fanboy anymore, but I also don't absolutely hate the guy. It seems to me that he usually you're either like a fanboy or a critic people are usually pretty polarized when it comes to him i'm i mean i still watch his videos now and then yeah. he's he's not that bad yeah the, the pro okay so the, here's the, the problem that i have with molyneux stuff um there was um a time where i was really interested in the labor theory of value uh, mostly kind of like looking at both sides of the argument so i i, I there's lots of videos on the, the labor theory of value from you know marxists but there was uh, kind of like a like the most a lot of those videos were kind of disappearing uh, on the other side because you know people were either changing their minds or closing their accounts or whatever, and so I was looking for some and there was like only a few and Molyneux was one of them and it was like an hour long so I thought like okay he was going to talk about it for an hour but he ended up spending like fifteen minutes like talking about something totally unrelated like oh yeah like last week I went into the barber and blah 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 and eventually he got to the point where you know he was bringing it around to the labor theory of value and then like he kind of goes on off little tangents and it's like well, I can't listen to this <laughs> like I, I want I came here to listen. Yeah about this and you know he, he he's he's not a very concise person and he, he even jokes about how un, uh, uh, non-concise he is uh he seems to be doing yeah, a little how bit his better wanders. yeah he seems to be doing well better his now video that title is usually kind of yeah, yeah that, that's that's for sure helped him but the titles of his videos like most youtubers are very clickbait ish i mean it takes probably the most controversial or popular thing being discussed and makes that the title of the video even if it's a four hour long video and he only discusses it for 15 minutes Uh, he did like three videos on the paris attacks within 24 hours it was like oh my god are you kidding me (laughs) and he was like he was mad that people were calling it like why are you calling it a terrorist attack and the title of the video was paris terror attack (laughs) (laughs) oh god Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, it. so yeah, so Jim, you know what happened to me this week that really sucked? Actually, it happened to me probably like a week and a half ago on the 21st, on the 21st of November, my phone screen stopped working and the thing has been blowing up ever since and I can't, can't read any of the text messages and I replaced the screen, but I messed up the replacement screen while repairing it because I'm an amateur. So the replacement screen has the exact same problem as the previous one, so I had to order another replacement screen and if this one doesn't work, 
that it's probably just something with the phone and <laughs> it's not my fault. Bottom line is I'm definitely, um, definitely blaming Apple for this one. I but told you. to be fair, yeah, you told me not to. All right. This is an iPhone 4S that was given to me by my sister two years ago for my birthday. It was her old phone. I didn't have a smartphone. I refused. I still had my NV2 from, from like freshman year of high school. So you know what? I wasn't going to turn down. I wasn't going to turn down a new smartphone, but it, it, I'm kind of wishing I had. <laughs> so yeah, it's been more trouble than, it, than it's been worth. It's, be, it's more trouble than it's worth. This is the first problem it's had, but I tell you what, I'm getting a text message like every every other minute now that the thing doesn't work and now that I can't read them. And I just know that every single one of them is, is from any girl I've ever had a crush on confessing her love to me. And I'm not ever <laughs> going to get to read it because this screen is broken. Hey, I just won the That's lottery. Hit me up. I need you to give me a ride to the thing. I'll give you a million dollars. No, exactly. That's the that's what I'm anticipating when I carry. But then you know what? I'm gonna go get it fixed and and spend all this money doing so, so I know what the text messages were, and it's gonna be like someone I don't even talk to, or it's gonna be like an ex girlfriend harassing me or something. <laughs> so with my luck, yeah. it's, it's Schrodinger's text message, man. If I do read it, it's gonna be something bland. But if I don't read it, it's gonna be something amazing that my life will be significantly worse off for me not having read. And and it's it's. And right now, it's both those things simultaneously. It's, it's <laughs> both of those things simultaneously. <laughs> it's it's a, it's terrible, mediocre, blah, and uh, and great news all at the same time. And you, you know, I'm very, you yeah. And you won't know until you open the box. <laughs> very disappointed with this outcome. Yeah. Very disappointed with this turn of events. Yeah, I'm not I, sure how it's relevant to Liberty. It just seemed like something I should talk about. It seemed like an important issue for the audience. Not everything has to be related to government for it to be related to libertarianism, guys. Well, yeah, no, this but, is important. But yeah, what's, what's really important is kind of consumer, uh, kind of consumer knowledge about certain products. Clearly, Apple's crap. Uh, I have a Samsung. I've had uh, a couple incarnations of the Samsung Galaxy, and none of them none of them have broke on their own like i had one that i left in the car on a really hot day and it kind of uh it like it messed up the screen because it was in the sunlight uh you know 110 degrees in, in a car for like hours and it just it just you know melted uh the screen it probably melted some other things too but i mean that, wow. that's that's not their that's not their fault that was my fault but i mean anything else like i've dropped the phones never had a screen crack um yeah so i've and everybody i know who's I'm, had an iphone has a broken screen <laughs> it's like almost everybody not yeah that's the thing and it's not even like the screen shattered i just i dropped the phone as i do every day so it shouldn't be a problem and i picked the phone back up in instead of Whatever it was I was doing on a phone, it's just blue lines on the screen. I was like, blue lines? I didn't download that app, so I keep pressing the button. And it's like, oh, it's just a bunch of blue lines. I guess the screen is broken. So I go online, and there's all these tutorials on how to fix the screen. So I'm like, oh, tutorials, then obviously it's something the average person should be doing. Let me just order the parts on eBay. Order the parts on eBay from a place that's supposedly less than 10 miles from my house on the 21st. And it doesn't get here, the parts don't get here till December 1st, so it takes over a week. Yesterday, I take the phone apart just to realize that this was far more complicated than I had anticipated. <laughs> I get all the way inside the phone. And by the way, just a side note, my phone is white, but the replacement screen I ordered had the black cover, because I was like, that'll look cool. So I was pretty excited about how I was gonna have a snazzy, new looking iPhone. But then as I'm putting it back together, I notice, oh, one of the one of the cords coming from the new screen is a little short. So I do what any sensible person would do, and I yank at it. I, I yank at it a little bit <laughs> to, to loosen it. No. And terrible wouldn't idea. you know it, when I put the phone back together, the new screen has the exact same problem the old one had. <laughs> Probably because I was ripping at the cord, but I don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm in between like, is this an issue that was caused by me tearing at this cord? Or is this an issue with the, the phone's logic board or graphics processor because it's the same problem twice? Who knows? Let me spend a crap ton of money ordering the part from a different spender and doing overnight shipping so I can take care of this as soon as possible. So if, as you can tell, I'm, ha I'm having a pretty bad day jim <laughs> i had a really bad day uh actually 
I had I had just gotten a brand new job and they were gonna pay me like a whole bunch more Don't than care. my other job. And it was like, okay, so I was like I was on cloud nine and I was like, Great. My dad called me and said, Hey, I just bought you an early Christmas present and I was like, Oh, cool, what'd you get me? And he was like Oh, down, I heard this story. Yeah, I was like, Go go down to Fry's and go pick up your brand new uh your Raspberry Pi too. And I was like, Oh, cool, you know, I get a Raspberry Pi. A computer. Was, yeah, I was like, Awesome. So I went down there and like I didn't I didn't bring any any money with me or at all and I I, I had my credit cards out because I was, you know, paying bills online. So I didn't have any money on me or any way to pay and they went they went there and they were like you know like oh you okay now it's it's uh you know it's 42 dollars and i was like whoa 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 i thought it was already paid for and he was like no no you have to pay for it when you put your credit card in it doesn't charge your card you have to pay for it here i'm like then what why would what you, why would you even who put their credit card in why would so you made me drive all the way across town and there's traffic right now, so I got to sit in traffic on the way back home <laughs> in order to deal with this on the 15, because, you know, you're right it's off the ridiculous. 15. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, Ugh. So I drove home angry, so, and then so, I called my dad, and he was like, oh, then why the hell do they want my credit card number? I was like, exactly. But apparently, yeah, you have to pay, and he was like, oh, okay. They wanted I'll his credit Amazon card number. <laughs> they wanted his credit card number for the Nigerian princess. The Raspberry Pi was a completely different ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess there's a there's a uh, Nigerian prince who needs to transfer his money around, but he just needs like eight hundred dollars from you to do it, and you're gonna get thousands, thousands. Maybe that same Nigerian prince was trying to hit up my phone, and those are the texts I didn't read. <laughs> but um, either way, I'm missing out. And the, I, I'll tell you what, that Raspberry Pi, forty two dollars. You said, yeah, well, no, that's I a little, it's a little pricey for a Raspberry Pi, my friend. Yeah, well, you know. I wasn't paying for it, but uh, apparently he found it cheaper <laughs> on Amazon with free shipping. Apparently like you were bucks. paying for it. Yeah, but it wasn't the, the, the new Zero one. Before, I've been trying to get my hands on that, that no, Raspberry oh, Pi Zero, one. but it sold out in 24 hours. The same day that I heard about it, I, I went online. They're like, sold out. <laughs> and I heard like there was like a big <laughs> drama about like, people like f- going everywhere, to store to stores all over the UK, trying to find a magazine with a free Raspberry Pi Zero in it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The magazine. That's right. Dude. It drove me nuts because the day that it came out, I messaged one of my friends and we're like, dude, we could do so many cool things with this. But I was like, no, I will be frugal and I will wait before I decide to buy this. And then like three (laughs) hours later when I decided I needed one more than life itself, they were sold out. I was like, let me give it, let me give myself three hours to decide whether or not I should buy a $5 computer. And then after three hours, I was like... I need this to live. Like, I need this item more than I need to find a wife someday. Like, this is the most important thing to me. More important. And then I get online. It's like, oh, they're all sold out. They I <laughs> didn't make enough of them. Sorry, Charlie. It's like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And people are like, oh, we're, we're selling them for $70. People on eBay bought, like, a bunch of them and are, are reselling them at a jacked up price. So I'm pretty upset. Yeah. And then, and then... I was like hoping I could soothe this wound by going to Micro Center because over the summer they were selling Raspberry Pis for twenty bucks each. I was like, I'll just get a cheap Raspberry Pi. I'll be happy. And then they're they're back up to thirty dollars each. So it was just a bit. I'm very unhappy with Raspberry Pi right now. Yeah. <laughs> It was, it, was, it was really bad, uh, but good, the good news is they're making more. And then uh, what was it? I, uh, I guess right now there is stacks and stacks and stacks of those magazines with free Raspberry Pis in every single one, uh, be in the middle of the ocean somewhere, <laughs> and it's on its way to the to America, and it's going to be in uh, Barnes and Noble. So they're going to announce when when they're they're what? hitting. Yeah. So. Um, Going to Barnes and Noble. I'm gonna camp in a outside weeks. Barnes yeah. and Noble. <laughs> I need I'm my pies, up. dude. I need two of them. I, I need. need to, I'm gonna buy like eight of those magazines and just make a Raspberry Pi cluster. <laughs> Honestly, I only want one because it's cool. I'm not gonna do anything useful with it. I just want a computer that's that small. I can hide it places. I do one that once the government takes over, and they they take away my computer, so I can't make animated propaganda. I'll have my I'll have my Raspberry Pi keistered. They won't <laughs> won't know how to take it. They, they have um, yeah. Do you hear about the um, I forget what it's called. My friend sent me a link, but it's another very cheap. Mi- it's like a nine dollar microcomputer, sort of similar to the Raspberry Pi, mm. but far better. Um, my friend sent me some information on it. Let yes, I think it's called the chip. Pull that C H I P. The chip. Yeah. yeah. C H I P. You can pre-order one for nine dollars. Would you look at that in the free market? Amazing. Yeah. And. 
it's apparently able to run any Linux distribution. Like I know Raspberry Pi doesn't have the processor for most distributions, which is fine. It doesn't need it, but this can run. I think it can run Ubuntu if you want it to. Like you can really put some put some serious stuff on oh, here. The Raspberry, the new Raspberry Pi that just came out, the uh, the two, or not not the zero, but the two, uh, that actually can run Ubuntu and like a, a scaled down Windows Ten. What? Yeah, they have, like they have Windows 10 what? on these things now. Yeah, what? But what That's I re- bullshit. What, but uh, what I want the Raspberry Pi 2 for is I'm going to build a little emulation machine, and they have like an operate or like a, a thing that's its own little operating system that all it does is emulation. So you can play all all of all Retro of the Pi. Old, yeah. So <laughs> and so I'm going to do that with that one, and then the 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 Raspberry Pi Zero that I'm trying to get a hold of. I'm going to make it like a little makeshift uh, community radio station that's only as big as like a football field. So they say. I don't know how big the range is, but they're saying like they said like a football field. So I don't know. Um, that'd be kind of neat. Think about know, this. Yeah, have have my little vaporwave radio station for the community, <laughs> and then put it in my car can, can, so can I can you, take it on the go. I, well, my friend and I were talking about, and I don't know if this would be possible or if it would just take way too much time, even if it was possible, but you could get a, like a couple Pi Zeros, make a cluster out of them. Mm-hmm. So think about it. It's one gigahertz in each processor, and they each have like 512 megabytes of RAM. So you get five, you get like four of them for 20 bucks, and that's four gigahertz of processing power. Dude, mm-hmm. for 20 bucks, getting four gigahertz of processing power, that's nuts. So you could make a couple, I mean, you could make a cluster of like four of them and probably run an N64 emulator on it or something. Oh, I mean, no, you the could new run one's- some pretty powerful the new the new raspberry pi runs nintendo 64 (laughs) and playstation one what yes i need one for christmas (laughs) it's ridiculous why didn't anyone tell me this dude i lost my other raspberry pi that i bought over the summer i must have left it at school very disappointed with myself so i yeah dude because for years i'll tell you a bit of a, a bit of a story i was a huge fan of the sega genesis and a few years ago, they started making handheld Sega Genesis emulators and also just handheld Sega Genesis emulators that like you could actually put the cartridge in. There were two. You could get the one that like used your Nomad? own cartridges or you could get one that... Yes, yes, it's like the Nomad. And so I got one of those. I was like, gee, I cannot wait till they start making handheld N64 emulators. But no one has for the longest time. And some yeah, people will like one. load them onto Android... Well, now I can, now I can make one exactly. I can just get the parts in a project case and and start to build it. But then get bored or angry and <laughs> then pay a friend to build it for me because I know realistically that I'm not going to have the follow through. But I'm still really really going to want it. I think the only thing that's really keeping me from doing too much Nintendo 64 thing is the controller. The controller is so weird that you can't really find any other control that works. You can't, I mean, you can. That's heresy. Yeah, but if I can't play Conqueror's Bad Fur Day and you need those C buttons as they are and the A and B buttons, it's like if I can't, do, if, I, if I don't have those six buttons on the front, <laughs> then it's kind of worthless trying to play that thing. And it's, it's a pain in the butt to do. It's a fair point. But, uh, it's a fair point. You know what? I'm I would- trying to find, I'll find, I'll find a control that works, damn it. And I'm going to do it. <laughs> Dude, this is, you, you know how this relates to libertarianism? This is the beauty of the free market. Yep. It's just the beauty <laughs> of the free market because you can buy a, a computer with you can buy two computers with one hour on the minimum wage. Yep, oh, it's crazy. And now talk. you can now you can buy a computer with uh, what was it? <laughs> less than less than an hour <laughs> than minimum wage. Minimum wage was what seven something it's, now five dollars. Yeah, but you're gonna need like peripherals. We should for just it. yeah. We should just start paying people in Raspberry Pis. Just skip the middleman. <laughs> skip the Federal Reserve middleman. Just start paying people in microcomputers. There's no problem with that. Just trade them. It's useful, more useful than than that paper currency that 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 debt we carry around in our wallets. Yeah. And, oh, we, we can go to the bottle caps. I don't think anybody's going to be listening to this podcast. By the way, everybody's playing Fallout Four right now. Everybody is playing Fallout Four right now. Everyone's living on. Everyone's taking Not day us. off of work. Yeah, because my computer can't handle Fallout Four. It yet. <laughs> I can't. No, you can't ha- oh. handle it yet. <laughs> you cut out for a second. I, I am, to you're be good. honest with you. Well, you're cut you out. can't afford. I don't. I, you go ahead again? and hit, hit, yeah, hit your buff dump. <laughs> yeah, it's that, that what black. What the hell button. is that? It's it's that black button. This is buff dump. The black oh, button. Yeah, this... yeah, it should be fine. 
But uh, uh, yeah, this isn't supposed to be a teaching line hospital. But the? yeah, this is how Fiend Phone works. No, no, no. It's a it's the black button that says buffer dump. Buff oh, dump right there. But I see yeah. it. All right, now I see it. Yeah. All right. Hell yeah. Anyways, go yeah. Ahead. To be honest with you, <laughs> I'm leaving no, this in. Right, by the here's... way. <laughs> You didn't make me look stupid. You don't have to make me look stupid. My <laughs> opinions already do that. But I was thinking about this. I'm going to get a little cheesy here. I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to get a little Jeffrey Tucker. Should just get it? I love Jeffrey Tucker. But Jeffrey Tucker is so oh, optimistic. Uh, he's absolutely I'm, I'm fascinating. Boxing. Have you ever been to McDonald's? <laughs> he, he is so right about McDonald's. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, my thing. God. That's it's, amazing. It's, it's, it's a testament to the free market it's that wonderful. you can get $1 cheeseburgers. And they're so fascinating. The little dehydrated onions. That are, oh, they're so that's fun. a very good. That's, <laughs> that almost sounds like I'm talking to Jeffrey Tucker. Yeah. I'm going right, to link, well, I'm gonna uh, link below that, that, uh, that, that uh, video. Here's that the thing, did. Jeffrey. <laughs> I Jeff, I tried to do a Jeffrey Tucker a few years ago. Like, or I tried to do it a few months ago. I was working on an impression, but I could never get it down. So I'm very impressed with. with your, what if Jeffrey Tucker and Stefan Molyneux were to have a conversation right now? Ah, <laughs> uh, Molyneux. Je oh, Jeffrey, I'm really uh, concerned yeah. that, that you've been going to Carl's Jr. lately. Well, it's clearly not as good as Carl's Jr. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well you're, you're accusing me of going to Carl's Jr. Okay, but uh, you're not offering any evidence, so I'm going to have to move on to the next caller, Jeffrey. I'm, I'm sorry. It's... <laughs> Well, I'm, and it, it's I mean, just, I don't hang up. I, I really need to talk to you about this. I mean, McDonald's is a wonderful, wonderful uh, establishment. And you're going to Carl's Jr. I mean, they charbroiled yeah. those things. I mean, you, you can't take you, charbroiled seriously. <laughs> you, 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 seem, you seem to have this, this need to talk to me, Jeffrey. Where's, where does this need to talk to me and not be hung up on come from? <laughs> I mean... I mean, where were you? Were you spanked as a child? How attractive was your single mother? Is the the question? Oh, she was wonderful, and she she used to cook like these wonderful biscuits and lard, and oh, they were so good. I don't, it's uh, a because, shame that we don't cook with lard anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, uh, and and there's not phosphorus and there's there's not phosphorus in the in the dish soap. I heard him with his yeah. speech about phosphorus in the dish soap. Phosphate, phosphorus. I don't know. I just had a, I just had a teaspoon uh, into my dishwasher and it uh, and kind of glistening in the sun. It's wonderful. <laughs> what? You put it in the dishwasher? My God! Stop washing your dishes. <laughs> That's Stop. the woman's job. <laughs> That's the woman's job. Women who don't do dishes will end this species. My God. <laughs> I can't. I can't do. I, I, my my Molyneux impression is always way better when I wake up in the morning or after I smoke. But when my voice is at its normal pitch, I can't do it as well. Like I need to bring my voice needs to be deeper. I haven't warmed up enough to do a decent yeah. Molyneux. <laughs> That you can, I, I can mean, do Jeffrey Tucker because it's so soothing. Uh, you just do it. It's just as long as you don't have to throat. And everything's wonderful. <laughs> uh, I, I hope you're doing well, Mr. Tucker. There's a few topics we're going to be talking about Jeffrey Tucker and how extraordinary he is. <laughs> dun, yeah, dun, Jeff, dun. Jeff Tucker. But here's anyway. You, but before we just went off on this 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 argument between Tucker and Molly, I was going to get Tuckerish by talking about how phenomenal the free market is. Because let me tell you something. When I learned to animate, which is my, my, budding, my budding young career is, is as an animator and libertarian propagandist and Christian propagandist, but um, I learned to animate when I started teaching myself when I was like 12, and the way I did so was by purchasing a $50 copy of Flash 3 off of eBay. Mm -hmm. Which even at the time, I mean, that's a software that was made in like '96, so it was ancient. But this was back when Flash was like $800 for a copy in stores, and I installed it on our old E Machines computer, which bottom of the line even back then for a new computer. And but it's a wonderful machine, and we can afford it on a on a very low budget, <laughs> and it's it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Uh, I mean, the, sure, the, it's the, not going to run the biggest best thing, <laughs> but it's still a wonderful company. But go ahead. I, don't know. I mean, Jeff, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, <laughs> when when you interrupt me, what you're telling me is that you didn't get the proper parental attention growing up, and that you, so you need to sit back and let me finish. All right, because you're I'm you're sorry. interrupting I didn't me, but you're not interrupt. really giving any evidence. Let me know All when right, you want me you. to sing the Gorgon um, Chance. Uh, you you can sing. You, <laughs> Gregorian chants? You're bringing... My daughter is in this room, and you're bringing up religion? You're bringing up religion in front of my... My God! Anyways, what, go ahead. Do you, do you go to hospitals and circumcise children? Do, do you spank and, and circumcise all of the children? You, my God! You priestly clerics of... 
<laughs> of evil and of the forces of darkness in this world. All right. So anyway, yeah, anyway. E-Machine's computer. This is the topic we were on. This, this, all right. This is, I think we both have ADD. Um, so anyway, <laughs> E-Machine's computer. I definitely do. Yeah. Cheap copy of Flash. And I look back at it and I say, all right, that whole combination was $50 for Flash. It was about $250 for that computer at the time. That was $300 back then. $300 was the startup cost of my animation career, basically, because that's how I learned to animate. And, of course, you're privileged that your parents could afford a $300 computer. To an extent, yes, that's absolutely true. But today, a computer with the equivalent processing power of that machine and a free trial of Flash would literally cost you ten dollars so a kid today could get started animating the same way i did on a ten dollar budget whereas 10 years ago it cost 300 and 10 years before that it probably would have cost you two grand and 10 years before that it would have cost you in the tens of thousands to have a computer that powerful so the free market does drive prices down and it does help everybody yeah i remember when i actually got my my very well no it wasn't my very first one it was it was a graduation present but it was like it was top of the line. It had the GeForce three, and oh my goodness, it can it can render that you. that little pixel thing. But no, it was it was the best. This was in two thousand. Did you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but it was it was. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. Did you? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. But did you build a software company off of your computer? <laughs> Because I did, and uh, anyone who doesn't start a software company off of their first computer is obviously spanked as a child. Well, uh, actually, I lived in the, actually, the single spent, mother ghetto. That is actually, I grew up uh, around the uh, Mises Institute, and I uh, worked around there, and I was a vagrant for uh, quite a while. And I, they let me inside, and you know, and they and they let they fixed my broken limb and <laughs> let me work there, and then they ended up not liking me because I ruined the website. Site, your, and how, so I made my own how website. Did your, how did your limb broke? <laughs> how did your limb break? How did your limb break? I'm sorry. My mother I don't mean spanked me. How did your limb break? <laughs> what? Your mother spanked you? Did, well, I'm, I'm sure you did food her, yes? <laughs> oh, clearly. But, did, um, did, did You did defoo your mother. <laughs> of course. Why, why, because why, I can't have this conversation with you if you did not defoo or your mother. Yeah, but he looks like he's not if a, fan of, a you, fan of Molyneux anymore. I don't know if you heard about this. <laughs> if they spanked you, you must defoo. Um, he's not a fan of Molyneux anymore? Yeah, why not? Yeah. What, what's possibly to take issue? Wait, so Tucker, but Tucker's so, such like a nice optimistic guy. I can't even imagine him saying anything bad about Molyneux. I cannot imagine. That's because he's Did falling he actually into say the, something about him? Yeah, he, he said he's, he's kind of falling into the, uh, the, the reactionary to the, the left and kind of falling into the alt-right ideologies, too. And um, he says like he still has a lot of respect for the guy and everything, but you know, he he seems like he 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 says that he's predictable and predictably bad. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. what? Yeah. That's what Jeffrey Tucker said. Yeah, I can't even imagine that. Yeah, I I'll, can't imagine I'll, Jeffrey I'll, Tucker talking you. smack about anyone. And I'll I'll post the link in the description too, so you can check it out. But um, the only yeah. time Jeffrey Tucker's ever talked smack about someone is when he called me a cuck in one of my <laughs> on, in the comment section of my video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're definitely a cult owner. By the way, um, did you do you, uh, you follow anything about Star? I know you're a, you're a Trekkie, right? That's right. So, what do you know about Star Wars? That it's terrible. Ah, we're gonna fight, sir. <laughs> but That's the right. guy who made your new Star Trek movies that were so great, better than the old ones. Is gonna make this one. What did you just say? You heard what I said. What did you just say about the new Star Trek movies? I'll fight you, mate. No, they're. <laughs> oh, Becky, hidden. I swear, me moon. I'll tell you about these new Star Trek movies. They're terrible. Ugh. The new ones. No, the new ones were entertaining. They were good, but they weren't. They were good, oh. but they weren't good Star Trek films. I you thought, feel I me, fam? They I, were good movies. I thought you were talking about the ones that are coming out, not not the prequels. No, the prequels are terrible. What are you talking about? There's nothing redeeming. No, in those no, 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 not Star Wars, Star Trek. I'm talking I'm talking about Star oh, Trek, okay. not your bullshit ass I'm your, your children's franchise. Mm. I'm talking about the big boy stuff. I'm talking about Star Trek, not that garbage children's show that you laughably call science fiction that is Star Wars. Yeah. Garbage. Because, pure be, garbage. Because clearly talking about space diplomatic relations for three hours is clearly a better spent time than watching yeah because you're learning about negotiating swords because uh. star wars star trek <laughs> is the world that happens when there's peaceful parenting star trek <laughs> is your dystopic libertarian nonsense <laughs> okay. which world would you rather live in it's post-scarcity 
Uh, they can go faster than light speed. There was an episode where Captain Janeway turned into a, a lizard thing. She evolved. Her and Tom Paris broke warp 10. They evolved into weird fish lizard things. I don't know why that was the next step, but it is. <laughs> First, they turned into lizard people. Then they turned into fish. It was a good episode of Voyager. All Every Star Trek spinoff was equally good. I, I will, I will say that this, great. The, 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 the next generation was, was okay. It was okay. Uh, I didn't. Okay. I, was, yeah, yeah. Uh. I wasn't. I'm not a big. I'm not a big fan of any of the shows. But that one was actually watchable. That was actually some. And a lot of shows were really entertaining. I will give it. That's that. That's more than I can say. But that's more than I can say about anything with Star Wars. But you know why? Because Star Wars sucks. But the movies. Some of the uh, the even numbered ones were okay, and some of them were really good. But the new Star Wars franchise, awesome, awesome. And that's and it, what? Yes. Yo, you don't like the new Star Wars? We're gonna fight. <laughs> the first three? No, 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 no. Star Trek. Star. Sorry, Star Trek. The 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 new Star oh, yeah. Trek. The re the reboots. They were good, but they were not good Star Trek films. Like they were good movies, but they didn't. Mm, they were a good reimagining of the franchise, but certainly they did not scratch the itch I went there for. Highly illogical. But um. That's very logical. Yes. <laughs> No, but the, 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 the new Star, Star Wars movies are okay. The new Star Wars movies are going to be awesome because the guy, is probably the same not. guy that is making them, is it, George Lucas is not putting his finger on the damn thing. That's what's going to make it good. No, and no you know special. I heard? I heard they're not going to do any any uh, the re-releases or special editions for the uh, for the old sequel uh, the the prequels. But who cares? Those movies sucked anyway. The prequels were the best one. No, are you kidding. Oh my god, no. The Star no. Wars prequels, no. they were so good. Dude, Jar Jar no. Binks was the character. He was no. the voice of a generation. He was an no. icon that we needed. No. no. Jar Jar no. Binks was the best character. No. What? He's the best character in all of science fiction. The the gay version of C-3PO was great. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember properly, those were the characters. Liam Neeson... The gay version of C-3PO and Jar Jar Binks. It's phenomenal. Qui-Gon Jinn shit. <laughs> Qui-Gon Jinn. You had a guy with devil horns. Uh, I will. I will give best, that one the least terrible. Yeah, he he was the least. He was probably the best out of, out of that whole thing. And then they killed him off. He in had the a first bicycle. Movie. Yeah, they killed him. He off. had a flying bicycle. But yeah, the, those movies. It was were like terrible. a flying moped. Terrible. It was all terrible. Those movies were the best of the. They were. No. They're all terrible. Star Wars movies are all terrible. So you don't even need to point out that the sequels were particularly bad. <laughs> they were, I think they're better than the other ones. Yeah. They're such bad films. Wow. George Lucas is a hack. You know what I've heard? I heard that the first, the, not not the prequels, but the first three, like the actual first three, were created while he was still with his ex-wife, and he would come up with his stupid George Lucas ideas, and she would tell him they were stupid George Lucas ideas, and he wouldn't do them, but they were divorced by the time he made the prequels, and she wasn't around to put him in his place, <laughs> and that's why they were so terrible, because she was an on-set barking at him, telling him his movies were garbage. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. I heard that he's, like, horrible to work with. Um, George Lucas? Yeah. I heard Obviously, he's, like, he's yeah. horrible to work with. He made Star Wars, and Star Wars sucks. Uh, and is for children. No, nah, it was good shit. Star Trek is for By the, the way, adults. I had, I had just finished watching like, all the original Star Wars, but I found the theatrical versions of it because the, 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 yeah, the, the special editions were terrible. Terrible. And then I was like looking at like, okay, so what are the differences? Because I hadn't seen any of them for like a while. So I'm not like a huge Star Wars dude, but you know, I enjoy it. At least the the first. Hey, you three. know, you know, the good three. You know what franchise didn't? You know what franchise didn't go back and add a bunch of special effects? Star Trek didn't, because Star Trek is better. Can you imagine if they went back to the original nineteen sixties Star Trek shows and you know added they, like enhanced special effects? You know that would be great. Like my God, Mister Spock. You know Look what they could? They oh, could. The they could have done with the first Star Trek movie is. Uh, fast forward in it <laughs> so it wasn't so slow <laughs> everything was slow like someone said that it was How like you take that back yeah someone said that it was uh what was it star trek the motion picture was actually should be called star trek the slow motion picture <laughs> you might want to you might want to seriously consider taking that back jim no 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 the odd the, the the odd star trek movies were terrible 
Almost all of it's them. It's kind of like Windows, where every other release is bad. Yeah, but the, the, the even ones were pretty good. But you know, Star Trek isn't my thing. Star Wars kind of really isn't my thing. But oh, it, 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 it it's going to be fun knowing that these new ones are actually going to be good. No more prequels. Let's just get crap. We just need to get a Star Wars fan on so I can argue with them. I don't even feel strongly about <laughs> oh, this. I just like talking God, shit. We should I drag always... Matt on with you and just let you fight and just call that a Lawbird episode. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even that big of a star. I'm not even that big of a Star Wars hater. I don't have anything against it. It's just Star Wars fans get so upset when you say Star Trek is better, and I do prefer Star Trek. So well, I don't to hold upset. my position very. Pen- no, I know you don't because you don't care because you're a nihilist. You don't care about anything, Jim. But if you did care, if you did care about things, maybe you'd care about Star Wars. <laughs> I do care about Star Wars a little. Little. Maybe you'd care a little more. Yeah. Well, I do care. Well, there's no objective reason why I should care about Star, star anything. Because it's, uni- it's universally preferable. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, oh, star Trek is universally preferable to Star Wars, though. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention that this is a flaggetry month. We have a new flag, Cantwell flag, because we were talking about Cantwell. So that's going to be the December oh, that's right. flag. Yeah. It's, uh, don't- do you think Cantwell is a Star Trek fan? No, <laughs> he probably hates anything to do with it because it's it's degeneracy. <laughs> it's they they're flying in space and poke scarcity. They're socialist. I don't, you know, I I would I think he needs a big hug. And don't get me fucking started on the Star Wars thing. It's basically just Lord of the Rings with with lasers. <laughs> it's just Lord of the Rings with lasers. Yeah. yeah. He I he needs a big hug. He's yeah. a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen Willow? This it's is George Lucas's best film. Oh God! Way better than Star than that Star Wars nonsense. <laughs> you know what's? By the way, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get them? a lot of angry emails from the, not just, not just people listening, but like one of the co-hosts is gonna be like, "Yeah, you say terrible things about Star Wars." <laughs> you know what's way better though? Then I think we can all agree what's way better than any of the films discussed. Alvin and the Chipmunks Chipwrecked oh, is God. one of the best films I've seen in my life. No, the, doesn't get a lot of recognition. I'm sorry. The, the best the best movie ever. It's it's a science fact. Is Freddy Got Fingered. The best Christmas movie is Bad Santa. Prove me wrong. Freddy Got Fingered best um, film ever. I'm not even going to try to argue that one. You're complete. <laughs> when you are right, you are right. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. Correct are we going to wrap window. this up, or did you want to have something else to talk about? <laughs> Um, I am honestly really, really getting sick and tired of Of my computer cutting out out. (laughs) because it just cut out. Yeah, (laughs) it just cut out. I know it did. I'm I'm trying to think of something to be outraged about, but I I can't think of anything. So it might be time to call it a day. Oh, you know what I'm outraged about? I'm sick and tired of how I can't think of anything to be outraged about when it's time to decide if the show should go on or not. Yeah, that's what I'm pissed about. Yeah, pe- people have people have outrage privilege, and they need to check it. Dude, they need to check outrage privilege. You know what I need to do? I need to finish working on Freedom Tunes. By the way, audience <laughs> listeners, oh, we have the uh, new season of Freedom Tunes. Let's just well, we'll just take a second so I can plug my stuff. So you can plug Freedom Tunes. I've been working on the since I'm home from school for a while and can just crank out work. I've been working all day long on the new episodes of Freedom Tunes, and I'm going to be able to start releasing them once per week. And Libertarian Republic is going to be promoting it. It's going to be dope. You should subscribe and send me money. Yep. Patreon.com slash Freedom Tunes. YouTube.com slash Cantimation. Freedom Tunes.com. Oh, by the way, have you seen my have you seen my Patreon account yet? <laughs> it's it's wonderful. No, I'm assuming you're just making fun of. I'm sh- I'm assuming you're just disparaging Patreon users. Uh, to an extent, uh, actually, I'm kind of making fun yeah. of people who who uh, who hashtag please donate. <laughs> By the way, we we do take donations, but I don't really care because this is just more for fun. I have a job. <laughs> I, have two- I care. Yeah. Send me. I don't. Or I don't have a real job. I make cartoons. Send me money. Oh, you you can read it if you want to. <laughs> if you want to put your reaction read on the what? show. Uh, the patreon it's patreon a, a slash dot jim, com slash jim jesus and yeah jesus, it, that's what i thought it would be and of course the perks are, are beautiful wonderful <laughs> yeah you dead air is wonderful if you want to read it out loud one dollar <laughs> per month i'll call 
All right, so if you get $10 per month, you will call Cantwell a cuck. If I make 10 bucks a month, I'll start all my hangouts by saying Cantwell is a cuck. Good. Drink a fancy <laughs> beer on live TV. I'm going to do a YouTube hangout. It's for 20 per month. I'm going to do a YouTube hangout anyway. Now I'll just do it with a craft beer to look cool when I call Cantwell a cuck. You will look cool <laughs> calling Cantwell a cuck if you have a $20 beer. You will eat something super spicy if you get 50 a month. <laughs> Once a month, after I call Cantwell a cock, but before I drink my fancy pants beer, I'll eat a ghost pepper or have a huge spoonful of really, really hot hot sauce. I think you should do it after you drink the beer. It doesn't feel like... I think the beer just makes it worse. kind of like a cop-out. New Gad said, Gad, Sten, Flag. Every month, I'll make a new Lolbert drama, Gad, Sten, Flag. For the wall behind me, as I call Cantwell a cuck, drink beer, <laughs> and once a month, eat something too spicy. Never say anything bad about Molly again. 500 bucks what? a month, That's make it happen. A month? Do you yeah. really do that? <laughs> For 500 bucks a month, I'll shut up about wow. Molyneux. How about that? But I didn't even talk about Molyneux. That was all you. <laughs> that was. That was. I didn't say a word about it. You him. brought him up. You, you talked so much up. crap about Jeff Tucker. Jeffrey Tucker. Oh, I love Tucker. Man. No, no. How could you? No, I don't You're talk doing, crap. That's everyone terrible. loves Jeffrey Tucker. So when I talk crap about Molyneux, at least I'm talking crap about someone who you can understand why people talk crap about. Jeffrey Tucker's so nice. He's like... I like Jeffrey Tucker. I, I, I like Jeffrey over. Tucker. I just think it's funny that he that he always like brags about like poor gruel. <laughs> like, like I made a video kind of doing an impression of him saying like, you know, gruel is just a wonderful dish. And, and <laughs> I'll link that too. But... <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he kind of like Mon, you might donate oh, M&M. 500. Yeah, he did like this article like, oh, M and M's are just a wonderful treat, and they're probably the best snack food ever. It's <laughs> like, no, it's not. McDonald's is not that great. You know what? <laughs> Excuse me. Good sir, I think stuff on Mon, you might donate 500 a month, so you'll stop talking bad about him because <laughs> the DMCA's aren't working out anymore. Yeah, that, that's quite. That's, he can't that's, get away with investment. that, but he can't. It's an investment. But he might pay you off. <laughs> But no, there's nothing in there saying I can't talk bad about you know uh, Michael DeMarco, his his right hand man. Uh, <laughs> still talk about him. <laughs> you just be talking, Mike. You just be talking crap. Mike doesn't deserve it. What did Mike ever do? He's the one that filed the DMCA's. <laughs> is yeah. he? So, oh, so why is Molly taking the fall for that? Because he did it under his corporation. <laughs> And then he lied about Stephon it. Stefan so. Mount is a corporation. That's kind of like that's kind of like putting a gun to my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it was live data design, and he changed it to free domain radio. So I, I don't know, but um, yeah, it's listed. You can you could read all the things on online about his corporation. Well, no, I'm not gonna. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Star Wars sucks. No. And I hope you all have a good day. Star Trek's great. Guys, I have no problem with Star Wars. I really don't. I, I feel like people are going to get all hate mail. about this. Yeah, send all hate mail to Seamus Coughlin at <laughs> FrameTunes.com. No! no. <laughs> you son of a bitch! All don't right. send it to me! I'm going to lose all my patrons and be like, what? Star Wars rules! No, Star Wars is good, actually. I, I've been entertained by Star Wars. It's good because it kind of... It really is amazing how successful the first film was. Like, who would have thought a, a sci-fi film like that would have taken off in the way that it did? And yeah, it wasn't in theaters the for like an entire year, place. wasn't it? It was in theaters for an yeah, entire people, year. But th- yeah, that's which is awesome. But back in the day, you would rewatch movies. It, people don't do that anymore. No one goes to the theater twice. You just go on Put Locker and watch the movie once. Yeah, <laughs> you never act like I, <laughs> you don't. I mean, I don't. I don't do that. I don't do anything illegal. I've never gone to no. you know, the free movie website. Mm-mm. That'd be terrible. That'd be terrible and wrong to do. And I don't know how I got a hold of those uh, theatrical releases of uh, Star tra- uh, Star Wars. I don't know. I don't know. The D special edition. Dude, I don't I don't know. Just, just the Star Wars Christmas episode. <laughs> <laughs> Why gotta bring up old shit? Why gotta bring? Up old shit? <laughs> yeah, thirty minutes of. Right, but yeah, all right. Take care, man. Take care, my man. I was glad. Good good to be on the show, folks. God bless. Have a good one. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.
for some reason in, the, in this country and in a bunch of Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. Fiend Phone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try Fiend Phone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve Fiend Phone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone. I never knew remote audio could be this good.